education home, EU, and sometimes international students at AHNZ London office. I would like to welcome everyone to our weekly live session, bringing you today one of our key partner, Kiel Universities. Uh, before I introduce you to our new guest, I would like to inform you who AHNZ Associates is. The company is a platform which connects the bridge between the students and universities. AHNZ Associates provide counseling to all prospective students based on their previous qualification, future ambition, expectation, affordability, budget, and entry requirements of the universities. AHNZ Associates has providing counseling to all prospective students. Um, and we've been operating over one decade now, serving over 250,000 students, and still we are counting. Since operating, we have more than 30 branches around the world, just to make it convenient for all of you to come and see us face to face. Currently, we collaborate with over 130 universities in the UK, and this is including pu public and private universities, as well as Russell Group universities. I would also like to make you aware that all our colleagues are world experienced and graduated from UK universities, and some of them are certified by, by British Council, trained by UCAS and UK universities. One of our key points is that we provide end-to-end -end service to all um, and all support during your journey with us, and this is free of charge. The greatest and most pleasuring statement we have for you is our visa rate, as we have our compliance team, which will help and guide you through all the process. We are proud to say that our student satisfaction is over 98%, and as a result of our hard and dedicated work, we gain more than 11 times the title of top recruitment award winners. However, if you like more information about AHNZ Associates, please visit our website www.ahnz.co.uk, follow us on our social media platform like Instagram, Facebook, Google, or LinkedIn. Now, I would like to introduce you our special guest from Kiel University, that's Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Thank you very much for joining us today. How are you? Hello. Yes, uh, really good. Thanks, uh, Madarina. Yeah, uh, good to see everybody. So, wherever you're joining us from in the world, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Um, so, yeah, so I'm Daniel. I basically work in uh, UG um, International Recruitment. Um, so today we're going to be giving you lots of information about Kiel, how you can apply for September um, 2022 and beyond. Um, we've got somebody uh, from the business school joining us a bit later to give us some information um, about our business school. I know many of the international students we deal with are interested in business courses. Um, so we're going to be finding out more about that. And also we've got one of our current students, Ijeoma, um, who's going to be joining us and obviously giving us the perspective of living on campus at Kiel and how exactly it is, um, how it looks to be a Kiel student. So okay. first of all, though, yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. Before we start, I will also like to remind everyone that um, will join today that they have a big opportunity to write down in a chat box all the inquiries, questions they may have in regards with Kiel Universities, if they want to find some more information for a specific uh, subject. Uh, and also, you have the opportunity to join us at 11 a.m. UK time on Zoom, where you can meet um, all AHNZ Associates Counselors from all over the world. And also, Mr. Daniel will be there to answer all your inquiries based on each of your needs. Um, so, Daniel, um, if you'd like to start with the presentation, that would be great from yeah. the students that they joined already. Yeah, thanks very much. So, yeah, let me give you a brief outline of Kiel. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm here to um, to help with any questions you might have this morning um, about Kiel University. Um, and, yeah, great to be here. Great to be working with AHZ, one of our um, agent partners. Um, so, yep, yeah, let's get on with the uh, slides over here. So, um, so Kiel University, uh, it's one of the largest campuses in the UK. We have over 600 acres. Uh, we have a good number of integrated master's degrees, combined honours courses, and also work opportunities, which we'll be looking at um, in a little bit of a while as well. So first of all, location-wise, um, this is a question we, we often hear because Kiel itself is only a small village, so it's it's probably not particularly a place that you'll be familiar with in the UK. Um, but Kiel University is located just here. If you have a look at the white map on the left-hand side, just where my cursor is, so it's located in the Midlands. So in between Manchester and Birmingham, which I'm, I'm sure you're more familiar with those cities, um, and then London, we're about one and a half hours away from. So a really central location. location. So to the north, you've got Liverpool, Manchester, and to the south, we've got Birmingham there. So it's an ideal base for you um, when you're in the UK to explore from, to reach whether it's the north, south, west, east, 
And you can see behind us here our fantastic campus. So one of the largest in the UK. Uh, and you can see the teaching facilities that we have. You can also see the accommodation, because in terms of accommodation, um, most of our students, international students, do have um, the chance to live on campus, which I'll be coming back to in a little bit of a while. So, yeah, 12 percent of our students are international. And in total, we have over 11,000 students here. So you can see on the campus behind it, there's a small town called Newcastle under Lyme, which is very reachable. Um, and uh, we'll be covering a little bit on that in a few minutes. So in terms of the courses that we offer, we have three main faculties. So uh, medicine and health sciences, natural sciences and humanities and social sciences. Um, so I won't go through all of these individually, but you can find a full list of our undergraduate and postgraduate courses on our website. You can find um, the combined honours courses that we have. You can find a full list. But just to give you a brief overview, these are the areas that we do um, teach at Keele. So on to the next slide. So in terms of our foundation courses, um, we've been running these for some time. Um, we're also running in conjunction with Navitas, who have an online uh, as well as an on-campus foundation now running. Um, so you can also find out full details about that on our website. But we do have basically various routes into our degrees. So we have, um, for example, health disciplines. We have higher, slightly higher requirements in terms of health. Um, IELTS scores. We do have integrated um, degrees, basically, so students who do reach the correct IELTS score. And then we also have standalone foundation courses as well. So um, whatever your IELTS score, there will be um, a course for you to get entrance to the um, degree that you want to. So just on those integrated master's courses, we have a number of these. Um, so all of these courses here do have the four year option. Um, so, for example, natural sciences, pharmacy, maths, all of those do have the option um, to study the fourth year as well as part of your degree. In terms of the entry requirements for our undergraduates, so anything from three C's to three A's, depending on the actual course. Um, pathway programs, we do work with lots of po um, pathway providers. So, for example, um, a lot of these have scores specifically for the program, so between 50 and 70 percent. We also accept the IB diploma. And in terms of those IELTS requirements, generally six for undergrad degrees. OK, so in terms of postgrad degrees, which I know lots of our international students are interested in studying with us for those. So normally one year, um, but obviously for PhDs, then longer three to six years. And then we do have that option for work placements available as well. Generally speaking, obviously, we have different systems from different countries, but generally a 2-2 degree or equivalent would be needed to gain entry on one to our post uh, onto one of our postgraduate courses. We also have online pre-sessional academic courses. So for those students who may need to increase their IELTS score, um, you could choose from a six week or 11 week option. So these are the dates for this year. So these are all being taught online as they were for the previous two years, something we, we started and it's it stuck with us throughout the um, pandemic. So for students who need to increase their IELTS by approximately one, a level of one, they would do the 11 week course or for 0.5 for the six week course. Um, so obviously, if you needed six for the course and had 5.5, then you would choose the six week um, option to study from July to August. And the costs are on here very affordable as well. So 2370 for the six week shorter course or 11 weeks uh, 4270. Um, so in terms of entrance onto those pre-sessional courses, then we have a number of different routes in. So we accept all of these qualifications. Now you can see um, language certificate, for example, IELTS indicator, TOEFL, um, lots of different tests here. We work with NCUK. We accept their English uh, language test as well. And all of those basically would be sufficient for you to get onto the pre-sessional course. So in terms of rankings, you can see a little bit more here about some of our top rankings. So top 10 forensic science, nursing and medicine. Uh, you can also see here the Guardian League table. You can do some independent research on this in terms of rankings, um, whichever portal, whichever website is popular within your country. Um, so third for medicine, politics and international relations, fourth, uh, nursing and midwifery, uh, sixth, and the pharmacy and pharmacology at ten, uh, tenth. OK, so you can also have a look at the National Student Survey, which I think is a really good way to to gauge um, more about the university, to see the feedback from the current students and former students or alumni uh, and see exactly what what they are saying about the um, university, which is why we're ranked in the top 10 for student satisfaction. 
So in terms of scholarships, in terms of our international audience, then we do have a number of scholarships available. So for example, we have the Kiel International Excellence Scholarship, uh, which is a very generous award of 2,500 for undergrad students or up to 5,000 um, for students looking for PG courses. So for example, um, this depends on your level of UG, um, qualification. So if you had an equivalent to a first, you would gain the full £5,000 um, award or anything down to £1,000 for a 2-2. Um, so this, this award is actually, um, in terms of the international students, a lot of students do, do qualify for this, obviously. So it's worth looking at this and obviously looking at your equivalent uh, within your country to see what your degree would qualify you for. OK, and this is automatically applied, by the way, these all of our scholarships are automatically applied to your application. When we send you the offer, it'll state the qualification that you have, and it'll also state the award that you would qualify for, basically, um, based on that. So there isn't a separate application needed for that. So we, we will do all the hard work for you and we'll assess it and then send you the offer. Um, and we also have a developing country scholarship as well. So um, this is basically a £1,000 award. And for many of our students, hopefully joining us today from all over the world, they would hopefully qualify um, for this 1000 award for every year that you do study with Kiel. So, for, so for example, um, students today joining us from, from India, from Nigeria, Pakistan, um, which are three of our bigger markets in terms of students and in terms of recruitment, then all of those students would qualify for the 1000 award. Uh, and again, that's automatically applied. In terms of other scholarships that we do have available, we have an alumni discount as well, up to 20%. So for those students who studied with an undergrad course and then continue on to postgrad, they would qualify for the 20% discount, as well as those students who may have done a study abroad placement. Um, we have uh, details of that on our website in terms of study abroad, um, our partner universities, where you could study those degrees, where you could continue your studies for a year. Um, you can find your programme and then you can find the, the Partner Institute. There's a tool on our website to do that. In terms of other scholarships, these are external scholarships. So, for example, Commonwealth, Marshall Scholarships, all of these available. And you'll have details of these, hopefully, um, in, in your country about what you can apply for. Um, so in terms of work placements then, so these courses in terms of postgrad offer the, the workplace op option. Um, so management, marketing, advanced computer science, all of these offer the, the work. Uh, placement option. So just in terms of our facilities, so we've touched on the campus and the uh, the size of the campus and some of the um, the benefits of that, but also in terms of the specific um, facilities that we have on uh, campus. So we've got the Central Science Laboratory. So these were opened in 2019. So you can see here we've invested a lot in the, in the facilities basically for uh, for all of our students. Uh, we can also have a look here at some of the student support services. So, for example, for our students, we have a dedicated international team who are there to support you. Um, we also have student mentors. We have um, specific um, counselling services available. We have 24-hour um, security as well on campus. It's a really safe campus, which we'll, we'll touch on hopefully in a little while as well. Um, and then we've also got the, the library, which is 24 hours. So we have lots of support for our students. We also have a international welcome week available. So as well as meeting you at the airport, whether it's Heathrow or Manchester um, and a transfer to the airport, then we also have a, a week basically to help you integrate. So we have, for example, um, different sessions on living in the UK, on how to register with a bank, um, for example, and we have social activities to help you integrate, to help you to get used to the new culture and hopefully make new friends from, from many different countries um, from all over the world. Then we understand that that's a difficult, uh, a difficult transitional period. So we have that extra week where international students start the week before the UK students. OK, in terms of other opportunities that we offer, so you can learn a language while you're studying at Kiel. So all of these are included within your tuition. There isn't extra costs for these. Uh, we have over 250 student union clubs. So we'll, whatever it is your interest is, if it's a specific sport or music or um, particular passion that you have, then hopefully, uh, again, there's a full list on our website. We'll have the right society for you. Uh, and as again, as, as, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, the study abroad option basically is available on many of the courses. Um, so you'll be able to continue your studies with one of our partner institutions all over the world, whether it's the Middle East, Africa, Asia, or closer to home in Europe. 
So in terms of the accommodation, so um, this is a real benefit to studying at Kiel. So we have those 2,800 rooms on campus, basically in different types of accommodation. But as long as we get a timely application, usually by the end of June, then you'll be able to live on campus, basically. Um, and that's guaranteed for our international students. So um, it might be a 37 week course that you have or the whole week, um, the whole year. You would also be able to stay on campus for the 51 weeks there as well. OK, so in terms of accommodation, so we have uh, the costs here and you'll notice um, it's very affordable to stay at Kiel. Uh, I mean, we have the uh, the prices running here from 37 weeks, 3,300 up to 6,300. So the cost depends on the type of accommodation that you're looking for. But I think it's just good as an example that you could um, live on campus throughout uh, your course for the um, fee of 3,300. So really affordable prices. So they've been kept affordable um, for our students. And obviously uh, you can see the number of rooms that we've got available there as well. So yes, yeah, so those are my details on here. Obviously we're working closely with AHZ, so um, we can hopefully help with any of those queries um, a little bit later. So if you do have any questions about it, the courses or the accommodation or, or anything that we can help with, then please post those. Um, and then we'll be able to, uh, to hopefully address all of those. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now because that's just a brief intro into everything that we have at Kiel and a little bit of an intro into the um, accommodation, a little bit of an intro into the course outlines. Obviously you can find the specific specifics in terms of uh, the, uh, the exact course that you might be looking for. You can find those all um, on the website. Okay, Madalena. Um... Yeah, thank you, Daniel, very much for all the information you provided about Kiel University. You cover quite a lot. Um, we have some comments um, already coming in. Takmina yep. is saying greetings. Greetings to you, Takmina, as well. If you have any questions or inquiries about Kiel University that you want to find out today from Daniel or myself, please feel free to write it on the chat box. Um, Kadjia is asking if uh, if I go student visa with spouse as dependent visa, is there full time work available for my spouse? Well, those information, I'm sure that my colleagues from AHNZ, if you join from 11 o'clock UK time, they will help you straight away with all those information. As I said at the beginning, we have our compliance team helping you with all the procedure in terms of visa and all the information. Zahid, great contribution. Thank you very much for being with us today. Um, Hamed is saying that our camera is off, but I don't know. If you can see us, just... Um, Put your hands up. Um, then another question is about student. If I heard, I heard that uh, if I fa a student fail a course, then instead of degree, he get diploma. And on diploma, he will not qualify for two years PSW. And in case of fail course, the university gives chances to students to reappear in examination or restudy that course. The same. Kaliamani, please join with us. Um, our colleagues from AHNZ will guide you exactly based on your um, needs and your questions. Mahbub is asking if Kiel University is offering civil engineering course. Daniel, maybe you can help us yeah, with we, this. We, we don't have an engineering faculty, actually. Yeah, so that isn't a course uh, that we could offer at the moment. But have a look on our website. We've got a full list of courses. There might be something else that's suitable for you. OK, thank you uh, very much. So. For the ones that join late, please feel free to put in the chat box all the inquiries you may have for us, for Kiel University. If you want to find out more information, if you want to find out something specific, just feel free to write down your inquiries. So, Daniel, as I said earlier, uh, it was a great presentation. Thank you very much for all the information you gave us for uh, for the students that they will be interested for uh, Kiel University. Would you mind telling us, um, you said that around 12 percent of the students they are international students at Kiel University yes. um, but Kiel University is um, is considered like a hub for international students seeing that is between Manchester and it's quite uh, quite closed for the big cities as well can you please tell us what benefits the university is bringing to international students in terms of multicultural yeah, exactly. I mean, for example, we have a, an Islamic center actually on campus. Um, so, yeah, we do have um, various um, societies as well. So, for example, we have a, a Ghanaian society, so in Hong Kong society. So uh, very well established international communities within the school. So hopefully we'll have um, a society. For example, a few weeks ago, we had a meeting um, af after sort of lectures with uh, the Nigerian students that we have. Um, some of those have only just arrived literally just a few weeks ago in January. So we have all sorts of events that are going on. 
um, all year round for our international students. Um, and then obviously, yeah, inter international students um, are, are real sort of big presence. And then um, we have Newcastle under line is a, a small town nearby. So students, obviously, there's a, a choice of uh, international restaurants there as well. Um, and then there's also choices of Asian foods, for example, that, that people could buy from there. But also you've got the option to, to go to Manchester or Birmingham. Both of those are around an hour away. Um, yeah. Obviously, um, you, you can find a good choice of foods or um, restaurants or specific things from, from your culture in either of those uh, big cities. So it's nice to have whilst we're a rural campus um, and tucked away a little bit. We've also got the big cities if, if you do need that from time to time. But um, you've got the best of both worlds going on there really with Kiel. Perfect. Thank you, Daniel, for all the information. So because this is really important for international students when they are choosing the university in the UK to see that they will have some facilities like home. They will find um, the new place where they will come they will feel, you know, like home because this is really important for, for them. You say something about the uh, courses that uh, are offered with placement, especially for postgraduate courses. Do you mind giving us an example of the courses offered with placement for the students that they join a bit late and they couldn't catch that information? Yeah, yeah. Again, so a lot of students get the option to do a work placement, uh, depending on the course. Uh, we've got somebody from our business school joining us in a little while, actually, hopefully. So we'll have a look um, at some of those courses and see exactly how, how that looks in terms of um, the actual placement. But um, yeah, increasingly, obviously, in, in, in the world and in work experiences is really going to be something that's going to put you in good stead when, when you go back home. So that's something that we, we really do focus on. And we have lots of businesses on, on our campus as well, um, which we link um, very closely with because uh, Keir while it's a university we do have other businesses um, who are on the keel site basically and we work very closely with those perfect thank you um and is the placement guarantee for the students or the they need to look after it do they need to do uh, yeah it depends on the course because some of them it will be integrated so it will be mentioned but there's others where it wouldn't necessarily be um a guarantee but we would do all we could basically to, to help the students find um that particular placement other, other students do volunteer for example um mm -hmm. uh, maybe get some voluntary work uh, on campus or maybe just work in a local restaurant or, or bar for example to get some of that work experience to help you uh, fund your studies okay and how much do students they need to pay for the placement here uh, yeah, again, it depends on the actual year. Um, it, it depends on the actual course. Um, but um, yeah, you, you can find all of that in terms of costings and things on the website. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Daniel, for, for this information. We, we have another question coming on. Can you please provide scholarship for the Pakistani students in software engineering course? Bumika, um, as Daniel said, um, they uh, they have quite a lot of courses available on their website. There are quite a lot of scholarships. So Daniel, maybe if you can briefly uh, say about the scholarship for, for the students, not only for Pakistan yeah. in general, because yeah. Probably yeah. we have quite a lot of students. Yeah, so firstly, software engineering is a course that we do have. Um, so, for example, many countries, including Pakistan, would qualify for the 1,000 developing country scholarship. So you'd automatically get 1,000 off your fees. Um, and then in addition to that, we also touched on the excellent scholarship. So based on uh, your undergrad degree, if you were looking for postgrad and you had equivalent to a first, then you would qualify for the full amount of 5,000 per year off your course uh, and also if you had equivalent to a 2-2 then you would qualify for a thousand so anything between a thousand and five thousand will be deducted uh, in terms of a scholarship for your course okay perfect thank you uh, i think uh Buchmika, that answered your question however if you like more information based on your needs please join um, after 11 o'clock on our zoom uh, meeting you'll have there a hns a counselor and also daniel will be there and it's going to help you based on your uh, needs so i can is asking um civil engineering eligible for ms if they have some material engineering available same all the courses available will be uh, on the Kiel website. Um, please join at 11 o'clock. Based on your previous qualification, Daniel, our colleagues from AHNZ will help you straight away with, uh, with all the questions you may have based on your previous qualification, obviously, because this is really important. Daniel, can you please, I think this is one of the popular course, uh, popular questions that uh, our student is asking. Um, 
give us the range of the tuition fee that Kiel University is offering for the students, like for undergraduate and postgraduate courses? Yeah, it depends very much on the course. We have different bandings. Um, I mean, so for example, postgrad, you're going to be looking at 14, 16,000 generally, um, higher mm -hmm. obviously for things like medicine, nursing. Um, but if you were to look around that sort of figure, um, I think the minimum would be 14,600, but you can have a look on our website for the exact amounts. But um, obviously when we're talking with the scholarship, then the deduction from that could be up to 5,000 plus 1,000. Um, yeah. You could be talking um, potentially 9,000 per year, which obviously with the accommodation that we saw, um, makes Kill very a very affordable option. Yeah, perfect. Thank you again. Um, and how much of this they will pay the deposit? Do you have a minimum amount for? The yep. So at the moment, the deposit is two thousand. So it's a fairly low deposit. So basically, at the moment, um, if you pay the two thousand, um, then that will qualify you for uh, the CAS, basically, which is when we start work with the CAS once we get that deposit. But it's all mentioned again within the offer letter. Okay. And the remaining amount, do, do the students have the opportunity to pay it in installments or do they need to pay it in once? Yes, it can be paid in installments. Yeah, the fees and the um, accommodation can both be fee paid in um, semesters, basically, by the semester. Okay, by the semester. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah. it's good because they have the, this opportunity to, to pay it um, in installments. I think it's yeah, more exactly. possible for all of them than to pay all in once. It's, um, yeah. it's yeah. incredible. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, we have, do we have Ijoma hopefully online, who's one of our current students, um, who's going to be talking a little bit about her experience um, at Kiel. There we are. There's Ijoma. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Thank you for joining today. How are you? I'm good. And you? Good, good. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time um, and for joining today and giving your experience to our students as well. Don't mention it's a pleasure. Um, so my name is Ijoma and I'm a student from Nigeria. I've been at Kiel for four years now. I'm doing um, the Master of Pharmacy with integrated training year. So I do have a placement year in my course. Um, I chose to study at Kiel because one, it's a campus-based university and being my first time from home, I wouldn't want to live in a city and be all you know, disturbed by noises and different things that could actually distract me. So I decided to go for a campus-based uni, university. And looking at the Kiel website and looking at Kiel, the area also is quite um, warm, welcoming, sunny. You do see a lot of green trees around, which is quite inviting. And it wouldn't make you, you wouldn't miss home as much per se. And also it's quite close to um, big cities like Manchester and Birmingham. So I could potentially, if I really did want to see a big city, I could go to Manchester or I could go to Birmingham or even London, because if you use the train, London is like two hours away, roughly. So it's actually, you could actually get to places you want to get to from Kiel. And it's not that expensive to go on a train just to get there. Um... Arriving on campus, when I first arrived, uh, my first day, it was, well, it was a new, it was new for me. <laughs> um, yeah, and then when I got on campus, I was able to meet with like fellow, with student ambassadors, and they were really nice. And even um, um, other lecturers and other faculty members, they were really nice. And they explained, they helped me, they explained where my um, accommodation was, Somebody actually even helped me go to, with my luggage to my accommodation and like helped me settle in, which is actually really nice of them. And um, they also told me different places I could shop to go buy food stuff. They told me the, uh, told me the bus, the bus routes. They helped me. They basically explained the layout and where I could go. And places aren't too far from the campus. You would get to you can get to Newcastle, and it's like a fifteen minute bus journey. And if you want to go to Hanley, it's like roughly 45 minutes to an hour on the bus. But if you're taking a taxi, it's give or take like 30 minutes. So everywhere is not too far, really. And we, on campus also, we also have a co-op where you could buy things. You could buy um, household items, like your personal effects also, your personal items and things like that. And it being a campus also, safety-wise, it is really good because you have the security going around campus at all times and you can always contact them if there is any issue at all 
But safety wise, Kiel is actually quite a safe place because you just have mostly student focused and it's mostly students that are on campus. So you don't really hear much crime going on. There is no crime really on the campus if I think about it. I've not actually, yeah, since my stay there. Um, as a pharmacy student, I there is a pharmacy um, society, which I'm a part of. So we have other pharmacy students from like different years in that in that society also. And you could mix with them, talk with them, make friends there, talk about your course and like ways to further help yourself and further develop yourself. So it's also a good way to network because mm -hmm. it builds that skill, the networking skill. Um, also, there are different societies like the Nigerian Society, the ACS, which is the Afro-Caribbean Society, which I am also a part of. And I'm also part of the Nigerian society too, where you meet other fellow Nigerians. As a Nigerian, that is really good for me because obviously different foods that like are home-based yes. and different things. Like if I just want to talk about home because I miss home, like I have people, I have a community that I could actually go and like talk. I can find someone and actually talk to them about it, which was really helpful. If I needed help with anything really, let's say I didn't understand something or I, I just yeah I needed someone to help clarify something to me and you could always find that there with the people around and again everyone is really so nice and they're so helpful ready to help actually you wouldn't believe that someone is people are actually that ready to help or that nice but they are so nice because everybody just wants you to be comfortable where you are and be happy mm -hmm. but, um like I said I'm doing pharmacy and with my placement year, my course helped me find my placement. So I didn't have to look for it. So they helped me find my placement. My only duty as a student is to go to that placement and make the most out of it, which was really good. And um, as a pharmacist also, if I, if I want to find work after I'm done and I want to remain here, um, pharmacy is a job... Um, they are always in need of healthcare professionals, and pharmacists, pharmacy, pharmacists are one of those. So finding a finding a job here, a place up here to work afterwards, wouldn't be that bad for me, also. And throughout my studies, my lecturers have been really nice and really helpful. If I'd ever had an issue, I could always email them, and they would they were quick with their reply. My head of school is also really nice and approachable. I could always email her about a certain issue and she would reply me and the issue would get sorted over the years. Um, even with my placement year also, because I start, I did start my placement year um, last year, uh, September, towards the end of September, October, beginning of October. And I've had my, um, my placement year, I've had, I have a personal tutor so you are assigned a personal tutor when you when you arrive at um, uni, when you arrive at Kiel. You, um, so I have a personal tutor. I have a quality assurance supervisor also. And I have all the other members of staff. And they are constantly checking up on me, constantly asking me questions, constantly finding out how I am. I do have a lecturer that actually comes to my placement to just see how it's going to ensure that I'm actually getting what I'm supposed to get. So that's the quality assurance supervisor. I'm actually getting the information and making the use of my placement. So Kill staff, Kill is actually quite involved in my placement and I really like that because that's helpful for me too. And I could always complain that, oh, this is this is happening and I don't understand what's happening or could you, I don't think this is how it's supposed to go. And they would sit down with my um, placement tutor and have a chat, have a word, and then just see how they could take things from there. So that has been really helpful for me also. Um, I've also made tons of friends here, which is really nice, which is really good. So I'm just not limiting my experience to Keele University. I could, I mix with different people from different cultures all around, which is also a good experience for me because it exposes me more to the world that we have out there. Definitely. Um, yeah. Can you, uh, can you please tell us for the students that probably they, they would like to do the same um, course as you as a pharmacy, how much you are paying for the placement here? Um, it's the same price as your tuition. So it's the, the, same price. Price, it's the same price as your tuition. So the tuition that you start off with is the 
tuition that you would pay on. So it's the same price for me with pharmacy. Okay. Yep. Um, hmm. well, and in terms of, um, um, you know, the, the area where, where is Kale University located, is it easy for, for you, for international students to find a part-time job? Like there are a lot of opportunities for them to, to find something to work there? Um, yeah, there are plenty of shops around that if you want to find a part-time job, it is possible. And as I said earlier, I'm a student ambassador with Keele University. So that is a part-time job and I do work with Keele. And I am paid. Um, as an international student with your student visa, you do have um, a limit on how many hours you can work per week. And that would be 20 hours a week. So you do, you can actually find a part-time job that you can work 20 hours in this area it is quite, it's not too, it, yeah, you can find one and then actually work. Okay. Well, yeah. thank you very much for your yeah. sharing thoughts about Kiel University, for telling us your experience from where you came to where you are now. Uh, it It is great, uh, especially for students. I'm sure not only from Nigeria students that they are thinking to come to study at Kiel University, but for international students in general, because it's another approach um, her, hearing that from you as a student than from me or from Daniel as well that uh, we are just, uh, you know, presenting the university and telling them all the information. So thank you once again for uh, for all the information and for your time being with us today. Thank you. Don't mention. Thanks very much, Ajayma. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Daniel, um, I will have some some more couple of questions actually um, that we might like to cover for international students. There are general yeah. questions that they usually ask us as agent. Um, is about the um, accommodation. I know you mentioned in your presentation that you are offering accommodation, but for example, some universities, they are suggesting students to apply uh, before or when they are deciding to join the university, just to make sure they will have the, the accommodation. Can you please tell us um, the range of the accommodation? How is the area over there? Um, how much they need to pay roughly, like to know what they have to expect from their budget as well and where they are going? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, I mean, in terms of uh, the campus on uh, the on campus accommodation, so we have those 2,300 rooms, which for international students, as long as they apply uh, before. Um, I think it's June, then they will be guaranteed um, a space on campus, basically. So I would say um, apply as soon as possible, apply for that yeah. accommodation as soon as possible, um, because I think particularly for students, um, we obviously understand that it's good to be close to the um, areas where you'll be studying. It's, it's, it's Obviously, it's going to be, I think, an easier transition, but that's not to say that students can't uh, live off campus. We do have um, a database on our website of approved landlords, um, and we've basically vetted those partners. So um, mm -hmm. for those students who would prefer um, to live on off campus and maybe share a house, a local house, um, then that's also a possibility. So obviously, um, students could do that through through the route that we've got on our website. Um, but in terms of the affordability, then anything really from 3,200 up to 6,000 in terms of that accommodation that we do have on campus. So um, have a look at some of the tours on our website as well so you can see what the accommodation will look like, what you can expect. Obviously, at the, the cheaper end, you'd probably be sharing a bathroom, but obviously at the top end, the 6,000 plus prices, you'd be looking at an ensuite. So it just depends on your budget. It just depends on the kind of accommodation you're looking for. But but certainly, I'd, I'd apply as soon as possible to, um, to get that accommodation on, on campus because numbers um, for September are are looking um, like they're very much in, increasing on last year. So um, certainly the earlier, the better in terms of the um, application for that. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel, for clearing uh, and clarifying that for us. Um, is the university accepting second master? Like, you know, sometimes the students, they are doing like um, an MAC um, in general business and maybe they want to do an MBA or they want to do another master. Do Kiel University accept um, this opportunity from students to do a second master? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it all depends on progression there, really. I mean, I think we've got the guys um, in terms of AHZ, your staff from compliance. So it'll all depend there on progression. That's that's the key mm -hmm. sort of aspect, isn't it, to, to make sure that we've got progression there. But again, it will depend on the course because obviously uh, different courses have um, different um, qualifications that we can accept there. 
Okay. Um, you said you mentioned actually on your presentation about the precisional courses for the students. Can you please tell us again how much is roughly the course and how much? Um, I mean, um, how long yeah. is going to take to finish the? Yeah. So that would be yeah, basically either six weeks or eleven weeks. So that's all online, mm -hmm. um, and then the the cost for that anything for the for the shorter one two thousand. Let me just get the. Um, the cost upon here again, the exact cost for the pre sessional. Um, also, just while I'm bringing that up, you'll be uh, eagle eyed viewers will have noticed that our rankings have just progressed on the bottom there. You can see the top um, 48 in terms of the Guardian ranking that was 69 a little while ago, so we've just got that change. So you can see there, so top UK, um, according to the Guardian, um, it's now gone up to 48. <laughs> so I think there was just a, um, a, a possibly a misprint there, but you'll you'll notice, uh, viewers will have noticed that the ranking has just changed there at the bottom left of the screen um so yeah in terms of the um pre-sessional English, so it's 4270 for the 11 week and then uh 2370 for the six weeks so either 2370 or 4270 Perfect. Thank you very much, Daniel, for all the information providing about Kiel University, the area where the students probably will be there for I don't know three, four years or maybe two years if they are uh choosing a master with a placement. So it's great um, for international students, I'm sure, knowing all this information uh, about Kiel University. And also, I just want to remind that they have the opportunity to, to join in 20 minutes, 15 minutes time on Zoom, where you will be there and my colleagues as well will be there from AHNZ um, Associates. So um, now as our time is running to the end, I would like to thank you everyone for uh, joining us today, especially to you, Daniel, for giving yeah, I, us information about yeah, Kiel. But sorry, Madeline, I think, sorry to interrupt. We've got panels from our business school, hopefully online as well, to talk about our business okay, school. Okay, that's perfect. Yeah, I thought she's not joining. Yeah. So um, can, can you see from the options? Oh, we have, we have okay. panels in there. He is here. <laughs> yeah, there we are. Possibly um, muted at the moment, but we do have... Um, Dr. Panos here, who's from our business school, basically, um, who's here to talk a little bit about, uh, give a quick intro to our business school. I know lots of students here, international students, will be looking at doing business, particularly um, master's courses, PG courses. Um, but also we've talked about the, the work experience as well and the work placements that we do offer and those local connections that we have within the business school. So if it's OK, can I hand over to Panos? Yes, yes, of course. Thank you, Daniel. And um Hello to everyone uh, who's listening. I'm, I'm, I'm picked up that you know this. This has been quite, uh, quite a presentation that uh, you know the the students have been listening. So I'll try to be brief and to the point. Um, I'm sure Daniel has talked to you about uh, the university and the area and all that. And I've heard the, the students' uh, presentation and you know what they what they were saying was really true. You know we do have a, a great network of support around here. You know at Kiel University and our size allows us to to do that you know obviously we are we are a mid, mid, medium sized university you know not as big as some other uh, bigger universities in big cities in terms of student numbers but that is an advantage if you if you really think about it because you know you, you you're not just a face in the crowd you know you yeah. you, get, you get a more personalized um service as it is you know you, we know you by name and you know we have a very casual approach to to education and uh, we want our students to feel comfortable you know to raise questions and interact and and all that so when it comes to the to the business school just to to give you an, an idea of what the work we are doing is we um we understand what why students come to higher education and why students would choose to to study in a business school uh and together with the discipline knowledge of course you know you're after those network con connections you know those those uh, that understanding of, of the market that you are entering that career trajectory into the future uh so we try to prepare you for exactly that you know we try to prepare you for uh, the work that you want to do the industries that you want to do and and what you may need especially at the start of your careers and i think a lot of a lot of students will be will be dazzled initially by you know, big name companies that, you know, will say, okay, like we have a cooperation with this company and such company. I don't want to name names now, you know, I don't know the, uh, that's the it. That's fine. Around, around that. But uh, I think for us, it's more important for, for our students to understand, you know, what it's like to, to operate in, in, this, in this environment, in this world, whether you work for a big multinational company or whether you work for a smaller, medium-sized company in, uh, in some region. And of course, the 
a lot of these skills are transferable, whether you choose to work in the UK or the Netherlands or in China or somewhere in Africa uh, or North America, you know, whenever, you know, the, the, the skills and aptitudes that you, you have, we, we, want, uh, we want you to understand they're going to be the same. So we have a lot of opportunities in our programs for, uh, for both undergraduate and postgraduate students, and we encourage students to, to engage with those the work experience opportunities where you know they go on short term placements throughout their their studies. You know during the uh, holiday breaks, for example, or during the summer break. You know you will you will be put in a team with other students and academic members of staff and real businesses. You know and you will work on um, actual business issues on actual business questions and problems and i think this is an invaluable experience for students you know nobody expects you to to have been the ceo of a multinational you know multi-billion dollar company by the time you graduate right uh, but this short term uh, experience spells you know can prove invaluable it can make a difference when you apply for those better graduate jobs in the future okay you know how did you know we want our students to think how they can differentiate themselves from other graduates. You know, everybody would have had a degree. Everybody would have, you know, have a good degree in terms yeah. of classifications. You know, what makes you stand out from the crowd? You know, why should an employer pick you over somebody else? And and I think it's that knowledge and that experience and the fact that, you know, you engaged and you showed that proactive attitude in your studies and your development, <coughs> excuse me, because it goes beyond then your studies, you know, you think about your your career as something that you constantly work on and, and something that is multifaceted, okay? It's not just the degrees, everything that the degree implies and everything that you do in parallel. So in the business school, we create those opportunities for you. Of course, you know, you have, as I said, to have a proactive attitude, you, you need to engage with these things, right? You need to engage with your studies. We need to engage with these opportunities. Uh, and as with the academic side, there's a lot of support for that as well. Okay, we go beyond just the, the year placement, as I said, which, you know, it, it's given that you will have a, a placement tutor assigned to you and they will monitor your progress and your development and all that. But all, you know, these other um, projects as well can make the, the difference. And we want all our students to, to engage with them and we help you choose and apply for this. And these are all paid opportunities right you get paid you work for a business on a project yes guided but it gets you into that mentality of having to commit certain hours in exchange for money because this is how the world works okay this is how business uh it's works. working yeah exactly and uh and i think we've built that you know in our postgraduate courses you know if we want to move on to our postgraduate courses you know we have that as a distinct route for the uh master's award so you you may choose to do a proper research dissertation proper in the sense you know the traditional research dissertation if you are interested in delving into a, a business matter more um, than others or you can follow you know a consultancy consultancy placement route you know if you are not so academically inclined or if you're not interested in, a, in sort of the academic side of it or desktop research of uh, of the subject you know you can engage with with a real life project with a business and then write up a report about it and and again you know you take out eight to ten weeks of of work and then uh you you have an academic advisor of course and you work on on the business issue and and again this is part of your training and this is part of um your degree and, and again it is a very useful thing and it's something you know that perhaps sets you apart at, at the end you know you are exposed to that side of operations in in businesses and you apply your theoretical and academic knowledge into the real into the real world during your degree program okay so you hit the road running in some sense when you graduate um, so the end they will tick two of them they will think theoretical and practical so they will be ready for the business field well, well, absolutely. And, and, and I think what we see, and I think it's the same for undergraduate students who return from a placement year, you know, they, they bring in that knowledge back into the classroom and then they, they interpret everything under that light. You know, they start looking at the theoretical material and how it translates into practice. And yeah. they grow, they've, they've grown a new appreciation for everything that we do. You know, it's no longer something that comes out of a textbook that, you know, nobody yeah. ever is going to use, or, you know, that, that old 
kind of misleading maxim that you know you learn nothing in the classroom you learn everything in real practice you know uh, it all of a sudden becomes very very real you know what we do in the classroom and what we talk about and and how that then is interpreted and used you know to solve business problems you know everybody's talking about your problem solving skills and all that you know but you know what does that actually mean you know what 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 how does it translate and how to and put again, in practice as, what 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 is theoretical actually because you need to sort it out somehow so obviously well, without this yeah. uh, absolutely do. absolutely and and again i will say this again i think a lot of students kind of have this distorted view of what employers want when they they apply for jobs straight after university and they try to you know you know beef up their, their cvs in a sense and, and kind of to you know think that you know all these little opportunities what good are they you know it's, it's just a small company in the region or down the road nobody knows them you know nobody i mean on the contrary you know this is where you show that you have actually you know entered the world of war work and you have that experience and you can operate in such an environment and you can scale it up easily okay you know this um great similarities between running an SME or, you know, being involved in an SME in some region with, with a multinational company. Okay, yes, the scales are different, of course, and there's different issues, yeah. you know, no, no doubt. But, you know, there's a lot of things that are done in the same way. And I think the mentality and what we call the soft skills that you develop as well, the disciplinary knowledge are very, very important. And the soft skills, you know, those employability skills that some people may call are exactly the same okay the way you talk to people the way you interact with people you know and that's the experience we want you to have together with subject knowledge once you graduate i think that's what sets us apart from from other business schools perhaps you know we we take that approach we we think that you know this is important to our graduate this support the students and there's no denying that you know higher education has that vocational <laughs> element in it nowadays you know students come into higher yeah. education with the mind of having a specific career in the future or working in a specific industry there's no denying it okay so we're not going to pretend that oh it's all about acad the academia and it's all about you know the, the, the discipline and you know the, the higher truths out there uh, if this is what you are after you know more than happy to talk about this and we cover yeah. some this in, in in the program but we yeah. also cater for those students who have a more pragmatic and um, perhaps a more vocational understanding of higher education and business school. Perfect. So, Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Mr. Um, Panos. So you're welcome. I'm sure coming from you, uh, from inside the business school, uh, students that are interested about this subject so to, uh, to study business at Scale University, they will be more interested and they will see another way of choosing uh, this university because it's more than theoretical things. You are also focusing on practicing. So obviously, you as a student, international student, if you want to come in the UK to study at the beginning of your, at, at the end actually at, of your degree, you just want to have something to go into the field, to be good and to have theoretical and practical uh, skills as well. Because as you said, yeah. even yeah. if you are, if you know all the theory, if you don't know how to put in practice, that's that's not going to work in the business field. Definitely. Definitely. A... And, and let me, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. And just to just to add that, you know, a lot of international students think that sometimes because of those visa restrictions that, that they exist, you know, these work opportunities and placements are not open to them. Uh, let me assure you they are. Okay. We, and we have quite a few international students engaging with these, with these opportunities and we want, we want more uh, international students to take part and, uh, and as I said, you know, whether you do this, whether you intend to stay in the UK for a while and, and work or whether you want to move on to another country or your, your country of origin, perhaps, you know, this experience will be equally valuable to you no matter where you choose to work afterwards. So international Absolutely. students, by all means, apply and, you know, take, take advantage of these opportunities. They're there for you. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. We have a question from... Uh two of um, our viewers, uh, prospective students, if we if you deal with PhD in business studies or a master by research program? Uh, we, we have, yes. Uh, we don't have a, a master's by research uh, as such, but we do have PhDs, which you can do in business, you know, in whichever discipline, uh, from economics and finance to marketing, HRM, uh, international business, management. It's 
really with PhD is a little bit different because you know you have to be matched to a, to a supervisor, but you have we have you know a, quite an array of, of disciplines and people people who are interested in different things in the business school. So I think the best the best way to uh, to go about it is to make contact with uh, with one of the academic staff. You know, yeah. the, all our profiles are on, uh, on the website. So you, you look at the say at, at people and look at the the research interests and, and the areas of work and, you know, whoever aligns with yours, then you can make contact and people are only happy to talk to prospective PhD students and discuss your research proposal and what you want to do and, and so on. Perfect. Thank you for uh, clearing that for us and uh, clarifying all the uh, information that you have uh, briefly, actually, for uh, business course at Kiel University. Thank you for your time joining us today. Um, oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Daniel, again for um, your presentation, for all the information you gave us and uh, you gave to our students about Kiel University. I'm sure that we will have quite a lot of students joining at Zoom. Um, there will be my colleagues from AHNZ Associates from all over the world, so they will be confident uh, speaking with them. And also you will be there if they have any questions to, to answer them. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks again for hosting today um, with our partners. AHZ. Thanks, Madalina, for uh, doing a great job today, organising everything. Um, thanks uh, to Panos as well and Ijoma, who joined us a little bit earlier, um, for her insight as a student at Kiel. Um, so, yeah, I'm staying online now for the Zoom call. So any students who want to come and chat, then uh, you're more than welcome. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much, both of you, and thank you for, for the students. Hope to see you soon and have a great day. Thank you.